Welcome back. Whenever I start running out of time, I rush things, and I most probably confuse you. So let me go over that last example one more time. So I said I have a completely fair coin, and I'm going to flip it twice, and I want to know the probability that I get heads in both times. All right. Well, we already know that the probability that I get heads the first time is 1 half. There's 1 half chance I get heads the first time. And there's 1 half chance that I get tails the first time. And then I'm going to flip again. And let's say in this world, there's a 1 half chance that we enter into this reality where the first flip is heads. And then in that world, I'm going to flip a coin again. And I know that there's a half chance of heads. And this is the second flip, and a half chance of tails. And I know in this other world, I'll just draw it just so we can figure out maybe other probabilities. I know that there's a half chance of heads. This is for the second flip. And I know that there's a half chance of tails in the second flip. And just so you know, this is called a probability tree. And in general, it really it works excellent if you don't have, you know, if you're not dealing with huge numbers. If you're not dealing with, you know, I'm doing a hundred trials or I am doing um, you know, or the probabilities get really messy or there's in each trial there's, you know, fifty different circumstances that it can occur. In in when you're doing with, you know, there in this situation there's two branches per you could say per node, so there's not that many circumstances that can occur on each trial. And we're not doing that many trials. So it's pretty manageable. And in these situations the probability tree works really well. You can never get overwhelmed with the information then. And I'll show you, we'll do some pretty complicated examples using probability tree. There's no reason why I actually circled that with yellow. I just happened to switch to yellow. But anyway, just so you know, this was the first trial. That's the first trial, and then this is the second trial. This is the second trial. So we want to know we want to know the probability of getting here, right? Because we got heads on the first trial, heads on the second. Well, we know that there was a one half chance of getting there. And then we know of that uh, one half chance, or you know, half the times we got here, half of those times we would get there. So the probability of getting there is one half times one half, which is equal to one fourth. Another way of thinking about it is each of these scenarios. So this is this this is a scenario heads heads, right? Because you got a heads and then a heads. This is the scenario heads tails. This is the scenario tails. Heads, right? You got a tail, then you get a head. And this is a scenario, tails, tails. And all of these are equally probable scenarios, right? There's no reason why one is more likely than the other. And so we have four equally probable scenarios. So the total of equally probable scenarios is four. And then what's the and then how many of these equally probable scenarios in which how many of these equal probability scenarios uh, is our is our probability or our event true? Well, it's one of them, heads, heads. So it's one fourth. So that's another way of, of viewing it. And another way you could view it is if we did this trial 100 times. If we did this 100 times, 50 of the times, my first, my first flip will be heads, right? And then of those 50 times, 25 of those times, right? half of those, of those trials where I got 50 the first time, will be heads again. And so 25 out of the total 100 trials will end up with heads heads, or this is 25% chance. I wanted to show you that all of these are pretty much equivalent, but I want your brain to kind of connect and, and make sure that it, that it understands everything. So now that we've drawn this probability tree, I don't want it to go to waste, so let me give you another circumstance. What is, what is, the, probability, what is the probability that I get at least, uh, what's the probability I get one heads and one tail? And notice, I'm not saying that it has to be in that order. It, you know, it could be tails, heads, or heads, tails. So this could be, let me write that down. This could be, this is equal to the probability of tails, heads, plus the probability of heads, tails. Or we could write that as, and this is kind of with set theory notation, but it's good to be familiar with all of these. It's the probability of getting tail, heads, or this u looking thing it means or in set theory or the probability of getting heads tails right we we can get tails heads or heads tails in either of these we're getting one heads and one tails so what's that probability 
Well, we can just look at all of the outcomes, and, and we know that there are four poss equally probable outcomes. And in how many of these is, our, uh, is the event that we want true? Well, it's 1, 2, right? So there's a 2 fourths, or equal 1 half chance, where, where we do both of these flips, we get at least 1 heads and at least 1 tails. And I think it's a good time now that you know we've drawn this tree and we've talked about you know two flips in a row, uh, to realize that these are mutually exclusive events. The reason why we can multiply the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event is because the probability of getting a heads the second time is completely independent of whether I got a heads the first time. And that might be um, obvious to you, but sometimes it isn't. You know, some people feel that if they got five heads in a row, that they're more likely to get a tails on the sixth time. And and but what we know uh, from experience, really, is that no, it's not like the coin knows that you got five heads in a row and that it says, oh boy, I better give Sal a tails now just to kind of make up for all the five heads he got. It's equally probable to get a heads again. So that's just something to keep in mind. And it's amazing how just human beings, psychologically, um, you feel that if you have a big streak of heads, that you're due for a tails. Um, but your, your probability of getting that tails does not increase. Although, I, I will, if you keep doing it, your probability of getting, eventually get the, the more times you do it, the probability of getting a tails does increase. And I'll show you that soon. That last statement probably con confused you, and I probably shouldn't have said it. But so let, let's do an example. Now that we know that in mutually exclusive events, um, you can just multiply the probabilities. So let's say I have a fair coin, and let's, what's the probability of getting five heads in a row? Five heads in a row. In a row. Well, I have a one half chance of getting heads the first time. Then of those, another half. Then another half. So it's one half times one half times one half times. One half times one half, and that equals one half to the fifth power, and that's equal to one over two to the fifth power, and what that's one over thirty-two. That's the probability of getting five heads in a row. Uh, what's the probability of, I don't know, what's the probability of getting? What's the probability of getting? Let's say I were to flip a coin. Uh, Seven times. So, what? Let's say I flip a coin out of seven times. Out of seven times. What's the probability of not getting any heads? Not getting any. And I'm gonna switch colors just for the hell of it. Any heads. Well, that might seem a little bit more con convoluted to you, but but just think about it. The probability of out of the seven flips of not getting any heads, that is equal. What has to be true then? We got all tails then. That's equal to the probability of getting seven tails in a row. Seven tails in a row. And what does that equal? Well, the tails are equally likely to the heads. So that would be 1 half to the seventh power. And that equals, what is that? To two. So it'll be 4 times 132. Right, because we have, yeah. So that's equal to one over one hundred and twenty-eight. And here's an, a, a fun experiment to do: is if maybe in your classroom, or if you have a large group of people together, you know, maybe um, maybe one hundred twenty-eight people, or you know, some large number of people, and you make everyone flip a coin multiple times. By by the end of you know five or six or seven flips, there'll probably be, and later on we'll actually figure out the probability that there is someone who has a streak, but there'll probably be someone who has a very long streak of heads or tails, and that person will probably think that there is something magical about what is going on in their life at that moment, and it's important to realize that if you have a if you have a large room, if you have a room of five hundred people, someone's going to be getting. There, there's a likelihood, and we haven't figured that out yet, but just given that you have a 1 in 128 chance of getting sev seven heads or seven tails in a row, someone's going to get it if you have 500 people flipping coins. But that person, since they just view their own reality, they think that you know today is their lucky day, and they think that they're on some type of streak and that they should go to Vegas. But that's just something that you should think about, because uh, you know probability can, can often play with our brains. But anyway, I have 10 seconds left, so I will see you in the next.